folks. This is the third of the three video segments that I'm making, and they deal with the axisymmetric modeling of a contact problem, which involves an indenter and a workpiece. Now, the previous two videos that I have made uh, were dealing with indenter being modeled as a analytical rigid surface and the workpiece as the continuum of 2D uh, elements, these axisymmetric elements. Then the other one where was the case where both the indenter and the workpiece were modeled as uh, with the uh, axisymmetric uh, continuum uh, uh, elements. However, uh, later on, the indenter was, the, after it was meshed with those elements, the indenter, indenter was uh, made and uh, it, it made a rigid, rigid uh, body, okay? So this particular one that I'm making is involving the indenter being modeled with an axisymmetric shell, which is essentially 1D beam elements which are being virtually rotated about the axis of symmetry and the workpiece as the standard uh, axisymmetric solid or axisymmetric 2D continuum elements. Now, the purpose of these video tutorials are taking problems that are already done by some other YouTubers using the Abacus CAE and uh, all the steps are outlined there. However, here we are trying to do replicate the same steps uh, using the uh, 3D experience uh, native FEA solver, which happens to be Abacus. And it's really good for people who want to transition from the Abacus to the 3D experience or entirely new to 3D experience. Either way, for those transitioning people, uh, this is not a straightforward uh, approach. Although they give them an advantage, but uh, there, there's uh, a lot to be done uh, in trying to identify what icon has changed to what icon, etc. Now, uh, there is a playlist which involves uh, things of this type, and uh, they're up on YouTube, and I already mentioned how the strategy, what the strategy is, taking problems that are already done in CAE and replicate the steps. Uh, this particular problem was done by the YouTuber, uh, with this YouTuber, and uh, uh, it's a, a work piece that down here, and an indenter, as you see up there. Uh, the, the, he's solving it as, a, as an axisymmetric problem, obviously, and this is the type of mesh that he takes. Uh, so I'm going to use the same kind of mesh, uh, and uh, we are going to be modeling this thing with a beam element, which will in turn turn into axisymmetric shells, and these things as continuum element, which in turn will uh, turn into axisymmetric uh, solid or axisymmetric shell elements. Uh, the nonlinear geometric effect is on, and this is the minimum increment that the person starts with. I will use the same thing. Now, the material is assumed to be for the workpiece to be elastic, uh, elastic plastic with this kind of a data, and the dimensions are given here. This indenter is pushed down by one millimeter. There is a major difference between the previous two approaches and the one that we're going to be doing. And I'll discuss it in a second. This is the case where both the indenter and the uh, the workpiece were modeled as continuum elements. You can see that these will turn, which virtually will turn into uh, axisymmetric continuum or solid when you rotate it about the axis of symmetry here. And this is the case where indenter was modeled as rigid surface and the workpiece as 2D continuum. One thing you notice is that there is no gap between the indenter and the workpiece, either case, okay? Because it's assuming that the, the contact is right at the outer edge and stuff. But when you look at this thing as beam elements here, which will e eventually turn into axisymmetric shells, there must be a gap here which accounts for the uh, the thickness of the the thickness of the shell. Because if this is to be a shell, rigid or not, and it will be rigid, we will use it as rigid later on, this thickness is important. Uh, so uh, indenter to the... Con uh, I'm sorry, this is not correct. This is to the beam, okay? This is not correct. This is to the beam. Workpiece to the 
uh, to the continuum. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this is not supposed to be 2D continuum. It is a 1D beam which eventually becomes a uh, axisymmetric shell. Bad mistake. I don't know how to skip that. Okay, so the gap is half the true uh, thickness of the shell. This, this gap is half the true thickness because you can see that if it's to be a shell, viewed as a shell, uh, there is a Upper boundary here, there's a lower boundary here, and the thickness of this is actually the thickness of the shell. Now, I just, I'm gonna, just going to show you a few uh, slides here which are useful. This is the one that you take a 2D continuum and virtually thinking about it as being rotated about the z-axis. This is 2D continuum, uh, 2D con axisymmetric 2D continuum, or axisymmetric solid. And this is the 1D beam element, which is going to be virtually turned into axisymmetric shell. Okay, uh, there are some slides here that I will get to it later on when I actually go through the, uh, the process, okay? So let me uh, stop this thing, go to my, uh, my uh, uh, 3D experience interface. I already uh, created a, an assembly design uh, file, okay, right there, product file. And uh, I, I'm going to rename this thing to be just so that we can find it later on if needed. So we're going to call it axisymmetric shell, axi shell continue, uh, uh, how about uh, solid or 2D continuum, okay? Good. Let us make our first part essentially. So you put the cursor, uh, right click, and you're going to go to insert. This is going to be the workpiece file. Sorry. Right click, insert, 3D part. And let's go ahead and uh, make this thing right there. This is going to be the workpiece. So uh, I'm going to double click on it. I have to create a rectangle and then uh, shaft it around the Z axis to create this uh, 3D solid object. Okay, so uh, we're going to do this thing on that on that vertical plane, which happens to be YZ plane, by the way. I will sketch. Now notice that I'm in generative shape design. I don't want to be there. I'm going to go to part design. Although creating the step for the creating of the sketch, it didn't matter. But in order to shaft, uh, I need to do, uh, I need to be in part design. So on, on that plane, I'm going to sketch a rectangle that is 25 millimeter by uh, 10 millimeter. That's going to be the workpiece once it's rotated. So this is going to be 20, 25. And this is going to be 10. Okay, exit. And we're going to shaft it for 360 degrees. Put the cursor there, right click, wireframe, and uh, it says wireframe Z axis right there. So this is going to be my workpiece. Okay. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to create a geometrical set. This is important because we need to create the axis of symmetry later on and a point where the origin of the axis system is. So it, and it has to, I have to place it in a geometrical set. Okay, the point, the point which is going to be uh, the origin of the coordinate system later on is going to be in the geometrics, geometrical set. I've discussed this thing in the other two videos. So, so uh, it's going to be at zero, 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 but it, it is within the geometrical set as you can see. And I need axis of symmetry, and one way to do that, a fast way to do that, to create an axis system, and that axis system, its z axis, will be used as the axis of symmetry later on. Okay, let's apply a material. So uh, we go to uh, tools. Uh, let us uh, create a material. And I'm going to call it uh, uh, Axi uh, Elastic Plastic uh, May 25, uh, May 29, 2022. 
okay? Uh, and this is going to be for the workpiece, right? So we say okay. This is just a, a shell, uh, a placeholder, which we have to input the data in just a minute. I already had the material built, but because I'm going to show all the steps, I decided to do it again. So right there, right click, apply, and I'm going to close this and put it on that part that we created, and we're going to input the values. So let's go down here, double click. Okay, so it's going to be uh, structures, abacus multiphysics. Mechanical, elasticity, elastic, and I believe that the properties were uh, Young's modulus uh, 100,000 megapascal and 0.34 for uh, Poisson ratio. Okay, so let's go down there. So 100,000 megapascal. One, two, three, four, five. Point three four. If I'm not mistaken, this is for brass, but it really doesn't matter. Okay, and then you go to plasticity, metal plasticity, click on plastic, and you can input your data. There's only two pieces of data here, this point and this point. So at 110 MPA, uh, we have zero plastic strain. So this is going to be 110 MPA zero plastic strain and 300 i believe at 0 0.8 0 0.8 plastic strain so that is this okay uh, now if you want you can actually plot this thing a uh, right click plot and this is going to be that straight line that i just showed you a minute ago okay so that's good nothing else and now we're going to insert our indenter Okay, so uh, put the cursor there, go to the top level, right click, insert, 3D, 3D part. This is going to be the indenter, let's go make it. Now, uh, this is going to be a surface, okay? We have to uh, create uh, a surface later on. So, therefore, I, I have to be in wireframe and surface design. But as far as making, as far as making the... Uh, the sketch is concerned, it doesn't matter where you make it. However, I will switch to uh, generative shape design. That's really what I meant. Okay, so uh, on that same plane, YZ plane, I will sketch under essentials, I will sketch that uh, arc. Okay, I don't need to actually include this line because I need to create a surface. Uh, so it's going to be first of all is let's let's draw it anywhere I want here first and then I'm going to move it down and create that gap. So this is five millimeters. Okay, and the distance from this point to that line, I'm going to leave it half the thickness of the shell, which I believe it's going to be. Uh, let me see what I will use for the thickness later on. Not there. We, we'll get to these uh, slides later on. Uh, can't remember. Oh yeah, see, the actual thickness of the shell is going to be 0.2 millimeter. So I use half of that, which is 0.1. So let me dimension, let me dimension from this point to that line to be 0.1 millimeter. Okay, so if you if you look closely, you see that there is a gap here, right there, there is a gap of 0.1, okay, that's right. So we exit this and then we're gonna go under the surface and we're gonna revolve it. Uh, when it comes to generative shape design, they don't call it shaft anymore, they call it revolve. And put the cursor in the second uh, second box. Right-click, insert wireframe, 
and then rotate about the z-axis, what by 360 degrees. These are things that need to be done the way it's implemented in the 3D experience, uh, where axis symmetry is modeled in uh, or implemented in 3D experience. Now, th because this is going to be meshed with shell elements later on, or beam elements, which are virtually turned into shell elements, I need a material on it. So uh, I'm going to uh, go to, to tools, a dummy material, because eventually it's going to become rigid. They're going to be declared as rigid, but you still need the, the properties there. Otherwise, you get error messages or warning messages. There. Create material, and I'm going to call this one Axi. Elastic. Uh, how about uh, May 29, 2022. Okay. Uh, so, all right. It's going to be created, and I'm going to apply it to this. Uh, I think it is right. Uh, where is it? Elastic May 29. Right, right click. Apply. I can close that. Apply to this part. And then go and put the properties. Uh, some, some properties which uh, I'm, I'm using steel for that. It really doesn't matter. As I said, you need it, but it's going to be. Rigid later on. Structure, abacus, multi physics, mechanical, elasticity, elastic. We're going to put down 200,000 uh, megapascal. 200,000 megapascal or 200 gigapascal, Poisson ratio of 0.3. Let me say OK. Let's do a quick save here. Okay, now we are done as far as the model is, is going. However, just bear with me for a second, we're gonna to go to those slides. First thing you do, you have to go to the very top level. Don't do your don't do what I'm about to do while you're here or in the other part. Go to the assembly, double click on the assembly. So when you go to the slides, um, let's see now, where are we? Go to the top level assembly, and and once you get into the once you get once you get into this, uh, uh, go to the top level assembly and then uh, go uh, and switch applications, model assembly design, and use accessibility. So let's do that. So let's go there. We are at the top level assembly, switch application, model assembly design. You click on it. Just, uh, just hang in there for a minute. <laughs> okay, well, right there. Now, that will put you in, in in this environment where the action pad is down here. Okay, so you can see that uh, when I click uh, when I clicked on that. Well, let me see now. When I clicked uh, on that, it put you in this environment. Okay, I went to the top level assembly, switched the application. And it put me in this environment. Now, when you click on this icon, that guy will appear. Okay. Of course, uh, let's go. Let's go do that. You click on this. Okay. When you clicked on that, it says, "Okay, where is your model? What kind of a model do you have?" Well, we want access symmetry. Okay. So if you look at it here, when you when we clicked on, we went there. When we clicked on that uh, uh, FEM, uh, what was that, uh, uh, F automated FEM, then this guy showed up, and then we have to select uh, uh, access symmetry. Let's go back to our screen. So I'm going to choose this. And notice that when you do that, then this dialog box appears, which is what I showed you right there. Okay? So when you click on that, you select the access symmetry, this appears and what it shows you is that your your workpiece is going to be modeled with these uh, 2d continuum elements which virtually is going to turn into 3d object 
and your wireframe, uh, your uh, indenter is going to be modeled with uh, uh, these beam elements, which after virtually rotated is going to be turned into shell elements. Okay. Now, visible, visible geometries, anything on the screen? If, the, if there was only one of these, for example, present on the screen, if, for example, the workpiece, it would not show you the beam slot. If only this uh, surface was present on the screen, it will not show you this 2D solid. But if both of them are, you do it, you get both of them. Or it's possible to select the geometry. So, but, but visible, we actually do both at the same time. Now, here is the dimensions that we are using. Let's go down here, see for a second. Right. So I will use exactly the same information or very close to the things that that reference, uh, YouTube reference on Abacus CA is using. So here's the situation. Uh, let's go back here. For this, I'm going to use 0.3 millimeter. This thickness is totally irrelevant. This, to this, to this totally irrelevant. Eventually, we have to put a thickness, but we'll do that. Uh, actually, sorry. This this is this is going to be a continuum element. This this thickness is totally irrelevant. Okay. The beam I'm going to use two two noted beam with 0.3. Again. And this beam radius is totally irrelevant. Okay, so what is important is this 0.3 mesh size that determines the size of the workpiece, and this 0.3 which determines the size of mesh discretization for the beam, which virtually will turn into shells. And you may recall that I showed you this uh, slide here, and I said this is a mistake, okay? Uh, it's, it's going to be basically, the beam is going to be these elements, which are going to turn into shell once virtually they're rotated. And we say okay and just wait. Oh, for, don't forget this. This is so important. Without doing this, it says you you. If you try to close this thing, it says hey you you forgot this critical information. Plane is the Y Z plane. The origin is that point that I created and I put it in a geometrical set. And the axis is that Z axis. Now I I try to do the Z axis. I don't know. You may try some other line. If you had a line, you can pick it too. But uh, this is definitely going to work, okay? So we say okay, and we wait until the so-called abstraction, uh, which is done automatically in 3D experience, appears on the screen. And, uh, this is a fancy way of saying that the cross-section right there, okay? So this is what is called the abstraction of that three-dimensional object stuff that we were creating. Now, if you want to see the mesh, just make sure you update it. Okay, update it, you want to see the mesh. So this particular slides here, uh, this one, if you say, if you want to see the mesh, just update. Now, don't ignore this because notice that here, uh, this is from uh, the, the previous video that I did, that there was only, both of them were continuum, the, the indenter and the workpiece were both uh, continuum, and therefore there is no mention of the beam here. Okay, we just for demonstration purposes, okay? Our situation is precisely what I had up, uh, where was it? The one that we just did. Uh, let's see. Yeah, where I specified my uh, beam, oh, right here. This is what we have noticed that this also appears, whereas it wasn't the other one, because here we not only have uh, a solid, we also have a wireframe, okay? So surface and wireframe, okay? So update, and you're gonna get to see your mesh. This is the mesh for the workpiece. If you zoom in, you can see the mesh for, mesh for the beam. Now, if you don't want to see this, the part is also showing up. So let's go to right click visibility manager. Don't show me the part. And here's the beam element. Okay. So it's there. Good. Now, at this point, we're going to create our rigid body. Rigid body. Okay. So notice that uh, um, there's two different ways of being able to do that. One is uh, uh, 
But let, let me actually show you a few things here before we do that. So what happened is that some uh, shell elements were created. Oh, actually, this is, this is not shell element. This is the, the, the 2D continuum here. Uh, and because it's 2D continuous, 2D is called surface quad mesh. But these are axisymmetric solid elements. And it's going to virtually be rotated. And then there are beam elements. These are the beam elements okay, that are going to be virtually rotated internally to give you basically surface, a surface. Now, we also have properties here. Now, these properties, the first one, we don't have to worry about a solid because it goes the properties of the, of, of, of the workpiece. But this one, shell section, see that? Shell section, you double click on it. This has to be the proper thickness of the shell. And that is what I had in uh, uh, one of these, uh, uh, not there, proper thickness of the shell. Find it. Right there. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, there is a place. Right there. Proper, you see that? Shell section. It has to be 0.2. And I'm going to try it with other shell, shell, sec, shell sections later on. Once I show you that things will work, then I'm going to try to make a 10 and 1 and 0, see what messages we're going to get. Okay? So let's go back here. I'm going to change this thing to 0.2 millimeter. You say okay. And you, if you update, of course, this will, update side will go away. That's pretty much it. So we are in a position, uh, incidentally, look, when I select this uh, surface quad mesh, the workpiece shows up because this was used to create this continuum, axisymmetric continuum, which virtually is going to be turned around 360 degrees. And this is my beam element, which is going to be virtually turned around to give you the essentially the uh, axisymmetric shells. Now, while we're here, we're going to create our abstraction. So notice that here is the rigid body. You click on it. This pops up. And there's two different ways of doing this thing. One is you go and select the beam element from here. See that? Right there. And notice that uh, that is shown in the, let's see, in the following slides right here. So uh, I, I selected thing in there. So uh, to create the, to create, uh, let's find it. Let me see. Right, right, right there. See the rigid body, the rigid body is selected by, by, you know, basically selecting this beam. You can see that beam mesh. Okay, right there. Now, this also says reference point in the center of mass. So if you go back here, it says what is your reference point. You can create a point or you can use the center of mass. And that's why it puts a marker here. So any information that you want to apply is going to go on that center of mass. And this is all going to follow that. Okay, you say fine. So that takes care of this. All right. Uh, so abstraction has been created, and if you double click on it, by the way, notice that this thing lights up. Okay, if you double click on the, if you double click on the rigid body that you created, the beam mesh will light up, and of course whatever you input, you just did this thing a minute ago. Okay, so that's pretty much it, and now uh, let's do a quick save here. The next step is to go and uh, basically apply our restraints and things like that. A couple of things you should realize is that is we already did this. Uh, let me see for restraints and things uh, of that nature. Uh, yep. So the bottom is clamped. Yep. The bottom is clamped. And then we have to say how this thing moves, it's moved down by one, one millimeter, etc. So we are at this stage. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, first thing you need to do is to go to 
this guy, mechanical scenario creation. Uh, most of my videos in the past have been going to structure model creation, but, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this, this, uh, uh, sorry, most of my models before was in structural scenario creation, but I'm using here because there are more licenses available to me there, okay? So I'm going to click on this, and that is, let me see if I have any of these slides. Uh, no, I don't have it there. That, that's fine. Okay, so you go to change application, you go to models, mechanical scenario creation. You click on it. And it's going to put us in the, uh, you know, uh, this module. Make sure you choose the structure from this thing that op opens up, pops up, structure, and you select your finite element model. You click here, and then you say OK. And now I'm going to go to procedures just so that you can see this better move it here, okay? You go to procedures, a static static step, and this slide, uh, this dialog box is actually, uh, let me see. Where is that? I'm in there. Actually, in that dialog box, I'm going to be using uh, th these numbers that uh, the, the YouTubers give me. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, min initial time increment is 0 0.01. We leave the minimum time increment uh, the same, default. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a mistake. This should be initial, not minimum. This should be initial, initial time increment. Yep. Okay, so we go here, uh, and uh, everything is the same, except that make sure that your nonlinear geometric effect is on and it is on. You say, okay. So this is when we create our first step. Now let's go and apply the restraint. So you go to boundary condition. This bottom I just clamped. So you go here, you select the clamp, you select the bottom, and the bottom is going to be clamped. Then we want to move this thing down by one millimeter. However, what we're going to do is first to make sure that it doesn't move in any other direction, but just leave the downward movement open, and then we change it. So if you go here, use the fixed displacement, on the rigid body, now notice that here I selected rigid body, and I don't like that. If you go to the slide, if you go to the slide here, where we are trying to do uh, there, uh, not not there. Sorry, just a second. This slide, by the way, this one is. This is the one that I just changed the, uh, the initial time increment and uh, made sure that this is on, okay? But what I wanna show you is here, okay? So, uh, the displacement, let me see if I can find the slide for you. Uh, this is already done. Right there, fixed displacement. I don't want that edge. I want the rigid body. I don't want that edge. So let's go back here. Let me remove this. Go and select the rigid body because I don't think that uh, edge will work, rigid body. And there are other ways of doing it in this slide. I also show you a different way of doing it. What I just did was this, okay? or it can be done like that. So I'll leave it to you to explore if you need it. And this does not move in the direction R and does not rotate about theta, but it can move down. You say, okay, 
Now, once we said this can move down, then we're going to go here. Uh, so under the under yeah under the uh, under the same uh, set of icons up here it says apply translation, apply translation, and then we can select the. Uh, let's see now. I don't want the rigid. I want the again. I want the rigid body. So let's see. If I select probably this point, it will select the rigid body. Yeah, you see that? I could have selected it from the tree too, but if I selected that reference point, which happens to be at the mass center of this uh, rigid body, it takes the whole thing. There we are. And it, it displaces it in minus one millimeter. And, uh, and this corresponds to uh, right there, that slide. Notice that I selected from the screen that center of mass, but I could have selected rigid body from the tree right up there. Okay, good. And this is perfect. Uh, let's do a quick save here. The next thing to do is to create interaction because if we don't, this will run, but that rigid, this, this shell will go through the uh, through the workpiece. Okay, so let's not forget about that. So we go to interaction. First, we define the uh, define the contact contact properties. You click on it. Under tangential behavior, we put down a uh, coefficient of friction of 0 0.5. These are the same numbers that that refer Abacus CAE reference is uh, is using. And under uh, normal behavior we use the default i think the default is hard contact but i just said it okay so what you see there is actually defining the properties which is contact property that i did here okay and uh later on this is the contact property is going to be created later on i have to do the actual uh, contact interaction i'm going to use general contact so let's go back here and this is good we close it Notice that in the tree, under the uh, step, uh, under the step or under the interaction, contact property has been created. Now that we define the contact property, we're going to actually define what kind of a contact we're dealing with. We're, do we're doing general contact, here general contact. And what you see there is this dialog box. Uh, mine is con general contact uh, too, but make sure that you change this to the contact property one that you created, okay? Contact property one, we created it. Now we're gonna do general contact. General contact, don't fool around with anything, default values, you say okay. And notice that we have here, uh, contact property, general contact, okay? And by the way, if you wanna know what kind of elements you're using, all you have to do is Double click on this line. If you expand in the tree, double click on this. It tells you that you're using axisymmetric 1D element. These are bar elements, right? So beam elements. And this is our quadrilateral, bilinear quadrilateral, which is going to turn into what we call continuum or solid. And it's going to turn into three dimensional object later on. Okay, good. So that's pretty much it. I don't think we have to do anything else. Yep. So, uh, Let's actually save this and run it. Hopefully we haven't forgotten anything and uh, we'll see. So we go to simulate. We go to uh, first model check. This is the simulation check. When I do these things, I always uh, come to a point where I realize that I forgot something. But I, I think this one is okay. We'll see. All right, let's move on. There may be some warnings, but that's okay. As long as there's no errors, I'll just ignore them, which is a bad policy.
so this is the run that is supposed to work okay and then i'm going to change those thicknesses remember the thickness of the uh thickness of the shelf remember that we're going to change those and see how it's not going to work and we're going to simulate right now I'm sorry for having to go back and forth between the uh, the slides and the interface here, but I think because you have the ability to stop these things uh, while you're watching it on YouTube, it uh, still uh, can be used. Now, this iteration is the equivalent of the monitor in the Avaca CAE you know, job submission or job you know, job submission uh, dialog box. In the cases where uh, a change of thickness and contact is, is not determined, this is going to go through very quickly. But here you see that it's kind of chuckling, uh, chuckling down and uh, going slowly, and then there's some on convergence. It tries to cut down the increment. So it's going slowly. It's going down slowly. That, that's good news, actually. When it goes through it very quickly, it means that something went wrong. See here, for example, it didn't converge, it's cutting down the increment, etc. Extracting the results, that's good. Okay. All right, we'll close this. This is the initial, let me move this thing here. This is the initial uh, initial uh, increment, which of course is no contact. Gradually contact is beginning to build up. You can see that. There we are. By the way, let's go ahead and change the display here so that we can, we can see it in 3D. Uh, put down, uh, I don't know, 360 degrees. And uh, 50, maybe uh, 50, 100. 100 sectors so this is the initial this is the final and uh, that is the contact pressure but the uh, one well, stress is over here okay obviously that is rigid there's no one misses stress going to be shown in it uh, and if you want to if you want to go here and just see the uh, for example remove the ball so that you don't see it Double click on this and just uh, don't select the, the select the ball. Notice that it shows you one new sister right underneath that in the part. But uh, and, and this will give you everything back. But I want to check my number. Uh, that's good. So uh, good luck.